It's a little dark outside. Good morning, guys. We're gonna try to do something a little bit relaxing, easier going, different. All right, so it's 4.48 in the morning. We're just about 88 degrees here in Phoenix. Cause I'm gonna drive about two and a half hours north to get out of this heat and do a quick inspection. Correction, it's 91 degrees. So I was contacted by a viewer who's interested in purchasing a, I think it's a 2002 country coach a motorhome and it's located in Northern Arizona in Chino Valley. And it doesn't take a lot to get me to go on a road trip. And it takes even less to get me to go to Northern Arizona when it's the middle of summer. So it's been about a year since I went up to Sedona to go look at a Fleetwood RV for Doug Sewell for a Sewell Motor Coach. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave early because I need to miss all the traffic going through Phoenix. We're gonna go ahead and head up to Chino Valley, Arizona, which is just north of Prescott, Arizona. It's along the 89 corridor, which is not too far away from Sedona, but obviously not as nearly the paradise that Sedona is. Definitely my favorite part is that I'm gonna be leaving this already 90 degree weather in the valley at four o'clock in the morning. And we're gonna make it all the way up to Northern Arizona a few hours later and it's gonna be 67 degrees. Kind of fun, the last time I was out here in Chino Valley was a few years ago. I had my world's smallest toy hauler hooked up to this Prius, in fact. We were picking up a washer and dryer to put in my son's house. Now this is a privately owned motorhome. Uh, I'm being asked to inspect, just a little outside my normal wheelhouse of doing dealer support uh, or doing mobile service around the East Valley of the Phoenix area. But it did seem like a good opportunity to help a, a viewer out and take a look at this 2002 Country Coach Intrigue in a little bit cooler weather anyways. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. Now I was kind of coming into this uh, inspection a little bit blind, but I did not expect to find this. This is an incredibly special Country Coach Intrigue. What makes it so exceptionally rare is that this is a short 32 foot diesel pusher from Country Coach. You don't see that very often. Like all of these, we'll start on the roof and then I'll come back inside and show you the inside really fast. Again, this isn't my house and this isn't my buyer's house yet. So I don't have a lot of time to take you guys through it, but it's really gorgeous. Of course, I do need to put the slide out out before I uh, do the roof inspection. And I even ran the Gerard awning out already. The window awnings are looking good and I have those out too. Like I said, it's almost always better to be lucky than to be good but this is a really nice coach. This is a 2002 Country Coach Intrigue, but this is a very short one. No tag axle on this one, but it does have a side discharge radiator on it. Has a Cummins ISC engine. Look pretty good. It might look dirty, but that is a dirt road coming into this place. I'm not sure that I've seen a better example of the quality that Country Coach was putting out. I think I'm going to be pretty happy that I decided to drive up here to take a look at this as an inspection. If you look at the rear cap here, where it meets the roof, there is no seam right there. It's been body worked together all the way around. And also, the weather's really nice up here. So much better than the summer down in the valley. So like always, I always like to try to use the ladder supplied by the coach itself to test it out. I'm not seeing any issues with the roof sealant on the ladder. It doesn't seem to be loose. And this is a one piece gel coat fiberglass roof. And it is incredibly strong, incredibly durable. And you can see it's basically seamless until it gets to the perimeter, which is on the bottom of the radius there. We do want to inspect the radius, make sure it's not loose. We do have all the window on these out so we can take a look at the fabrics, but those look good. I think these are original. Might be a little bit loose right there, but that can be addressed. And then it looks like they're using just Dicor lap sealant on the roof. There's no rear seam right after walk. That's just paint. And the paint looks like it's in really good shape. I'm not even seeing any checking. Of course, we always check the clearance lights, make sure they're not cracked, missing, or broken. 
does look like they took out the middle clearance light to put a new wireless camera on. I'm not sure that was a good choice, but it's something that can be done. Just because you should have five lights on here. We'll make a note of that. The rest of the lights look good. We probably have the original Penguin roof AC. It's likely a heat pump. I'll make sure that it's not loose. But man, this looks really almost brand new back here. It's probably a little chalky. Just a little bit. I'll just use a wash and a wax. I don't think the owner or the current owner has used it in a little bit. It's just been in their garage back here. The TV antenna. Somebody's uh, changed out the TV antenna head because it has a wingman on it. But it looks like somebody's been spraying grease on these gears. And this boot could probably be replaced. But the rest of the ceiling looks good. Come over here to the skylight. Don't look for anything loose. That might be a little loose. But I don't see an issue with the sealant there. It's not cracked. It's looking really good. Again, the lap sealant looks intact. Come over here. That edge molding looks fine. Over on this side. No. It's not loose. So it's probably a little bit of clear silicone that's peeling a little bit. You can see they touched it up on that sealant right there. That window awning looks to be in good shape. Even though the rail fabric there is a little bit short now. I did run the Gerard patio awning out. So we can inspect that while we're doing that. And there's just a foam seal that'll fill the gap between the awning and the sidewall to kind of keep rain from going in between there and going down the sidewall down below when the awning's out. Got their two sewer vents. Sealant looks really good. Now this is the Dometic roof AC, or this is the Dometic refrigerator vent cap. And I can tell you it's at the end of its life. It's turned into powder. I could rip this thing off very effortlessly. I'll recommend a new one. Country Coach did put some side marker clearance lights on these. Looks like that one's cracked right there. Come back to here, there is a fantastic vent. No cover on it. We'll check and make sure the base isn't cracked anywhere. Saying it looks good. Again, we have Dicor on here. And again, when I talk about washing and waxing the uh, fiberglass roofs, it's just going to be a wash and wax product. You can paste wax it if you want to, but it's an awful lot more work than I think needs to be put into a roof. That ceiling and that vent looks good. Come over to this side. That molding looks intact. I mean, that's just that's a really good design. I don't know why they, more manufacturers haven't done that. Besides the fact that all the work it takes to mold that perfectly. So this slide out topper is also a window awning. I have it deployed. So it has a little bit of wear on it, but this is another Zipti product. It's a pretty good quality one. Take a look at the seals. I'm not seeing any issue there. I mean, we can be worried about holes, but those are intentional holes so that water doesn't pool right in that area. We'll inspect the seams. Seams actually look pretty good on this. Even the molding right here looks really good. Man, this is a 2002. This one's 20 years old, guys. It's uh, really difficult to believe this thing is 20 years old. It's gorgeous. Come around in front of the refrigerator vent. We're gonna follow this around. I don't see any real damage to the patio awning. The seams aren't separating. Uh, the mount looks good. See a problem with the sealant. Other than maybe it could be touched up right about here. Here in a few areas, there's just going to be a Vita sealant, a Vita uh, clear silicone to top that off, just to keep water from going in between the sidewall and this awning. It has nothing to do about weatherproofing the awning at all, just to keep the nuance of uh, water in between those down. The wind sensor's right there. I mean, we can try to see if it'll work. Hey, look at that! It worked. <laughs> All that talking I always do about these things broken and never working, but it worked. I have an air horn here. No real issue, it's not loose. I have a little bit of a spider crack in the fiberglass right there, but 
that's just going to be on the surface level. I'm not too worried about that. It clears that front door just fine. They really did make these things better in 2001 and 2002, I think. Man, that worked perfectly. If we come to the front AC, looks like it's still the original one. It's not loose, is it? No, it's not loose. But these uh, shrouds look like they've been recently replaced because they're almost brand new looking. They look good. Then we have a wine guard traveler here, which is definitely not the original one. I probably went through a couple different satellites here because these would have been a wine guard dome unit. And that would have been still newer than 2002 would have had. I'm not seeing an issue with any of the install or the old holes. That's why I said sometimes it's usually better just to leave the old mounts up here. Because if you take that off, now you have three holes that sealant can peel off of really easily. Whereas this acts as a, uh, a plug for those holes on top of the sealant. The air horn looks good. You look at the front cap here. Again, no seam. It's all been body worked together to the roof. And we'll go over the edge, take a look at the clearance lights. That one's cracked, that one's cracked. That one's cracked, that one's cracked. And that one's cracking. Take a look down at the windshield. It's not popping out of the gasket anywhere that I can see. Uh, this doesn't look bad. I don't know why somebody touched up the ceiling with a couple different styles. That should have just been all Dicor. And I'm assuming this was a radio antenna or a CB antenna that somebody had removed. I didn't look over the side on this side. Everything looks really good. It's a good opportunity to look down the sidewall too. Uh, if there is delamination or bubbling, you'll see it really easily from this view. And I don't see it. And the slide still looks really good here. That was a really nice roof. So I was inspecting the roof on this 2002 Country Coach Intrigue. It's 20 years old now, and it looks really good. Somebody's really been taking care of this thing. We found a few minor issues like clearance lights and a uh, uh, refrigerator vent cap, but that's pretty common for this age. Other than that, somebody's really been taking care of this. And yeah, I might be sweating a little bit here, but it's definitely not the same temperature that it is down in the valley. And check this view out. Maybe it's not Sedona, but this is a really gorgeous view to look out at here in northern Arizona. And for me, this is definitely a better choice to be up here in Chino Valley, Arizona, rather than in August heat in Phoenix. So let's get off the roof. I'll take it down inside real fast, but this is a really nice coach. Let's put the rest of these uh, awnings away. These zipty slide out window awnings are robust and nice, but they're a little bit frustrating to do from the ground. The rest of this will go in and out automatically with the slide out. But yeah, even the slide out box looks really good. And that's a metal base under here. I'm telling you, they built these things really well. And I already put that one away because when it's deployed, it's kind of like right next to the front door and I was going to smack my face on it going in and out. It seems like a strange thing to do. I don't even know that those should be there because the patio awning covers those windows really easily. But it is always good to have options. Maybe you can't put the awning out sometimes when you're camping. So we go inside right here. I still have the country coach floor mats there and the screen door look at that it's pristine even more pristine are the drivers and passenger seats this one's been very well loved and maintained but let's get that beautiful reveal on the inside and here's one important thing to always look for if you have a RV with ozite which is this fabric material right here if you just come down if you just look at this ozite right above your head if there's any roof leaks, you'll be able to see them pretty evidently. There'll be a stain up there. So that's one good trick to use if you're looking for roof leaks. Especially around the skylight here, you'd want to look for any... There'll be some brown creeping stains usually. 
Maybe a little bit black, but usually brown and black. And then around the uh, AC is a very common place to look for them. But I did promise we'll take a look at this one real fast. Like I said, this is uh, an independent inspection I'm doing for a potential buyer. So I don't have too much time to take you through somebody else's house. But there is the one slide out on this one, which we've already ran out. It's this uh, slide out on the driver's side. It does have a nice tile landing in 2002, but it does have carpet in the living room area. Uh, then it does go back to tile again, so it's just a little bit of carpet, which isn't too bad for 2002. All the cabinetry is going to be that wonderful Oregon solid wood cabinetry that I, that I really apparently can't stop talking about. The driver's compartment is actually pretty well laid out, easy to see, and it does have the Silverleaf VMS system on there, and even the original Panasonic backup camera radio still working on it however they did take the tube tv out and put an lg tv and blu-ray player on so that's a really nice upgrade to already have taken care of now the carpet itself is in really good condition this sofa is a cloth sofa but this fabric is also in good shape it does turn into a bed it just jack nice just like that should be a very comfortable bed now this does have Unfortunately, CG windows, and on CG windows, it is pretty common to have what I call a seal creep, where the seal between the two panes of glass starts to creep. It's even more evident, I'm sure you guys already saw, in the driver's window right there. That's very, very common. It can be fixed. Uh, I don't know if I'd worry about it too much unless it's impeding vision or if you have a lot of moisture in the glass. Next to the sofa is the galley. This is a solid surface Corian countertop. It does have asymmetrical stainless steel sink. So it's kind of nice. So you can still have countertop space right here and have a working sink over on this side if you need it. Uh, Country Coach did go ahead and give storage cubbies right there for the sink and stove cover. The backsplash. I'm not sure what that is. It's almost like a marbleized Corian. Or it could be metal. I don't know what it is. But it's really nice looking. It does have a sharp carousel convection of a microwave and a two burner propane stove top. It does have electronic ignition on it with the safety valve. So it has to sense the flame in order to stay open. But I do like how that stove top is trimmed in. It's like a stainless steel metal to kind of keep uh, the countertop from getting damaged from the heat. Now across from the stovetop and that slide out will be the dinette. Of course, this does not turn into a bed, but it's already in the extended position. You can pull that out and there's the leaf that you can remove to make the table a little bit shorter. There are additional folding chairs for this one. And then next to the dinette will be the recliner. This recliner can be moved wherever you'd like, but it does have this cool pull out desk. So that's really neat. You can either have that or a little end table right next to it. You get to decide how you want it to be. Now this still does have the Dometic two-way RV refrigerator on here. It runs off propane and electric. You may be able to take that out and put a small apartment refrigerator in in its place if you wanted to. But this one is working. And as we go past this solid cherry wood door, we'll make it to the hallway. There's a little closet right here. Full of Reflectix, unfortunately. Decent sized closet. Down below, it is just gonna be adjustable shelving, but this would be set up for a washer dryer combo if they wanted to put one in. It's already plumbed for it. Now over here will be an additional closet, and it is cedar lined up here. And just behind that closet through the hallway, another solid wood pocket door will be the water closet. This is a ceiling traveler. So it has the uh, china bowl on it and there's a gravity toilet. Again, this is all three quarter inch of veneer plywood, cabinet grade, a lot of medicine cabinets above, Corian countertop with an integrated sink and wonderful beveled mirror backsplash. Very common in this era. Over here is gonna be the Neo Angle shower. It is a corner shower, it is fiberglass with our country coach 12 volt light in it 
Now I did already run the water in there, so I'm not going to step inside. But this one does have a pretty substantial step up. I'd almost call it 14 inches or so. I don't know. That's that's a pretty tall step up. But other than that, it's a really nice shower. If I was going to step up, I could step in right here. And I'm not going to hit my head going in, but I'm sure coming out I would hit my head. I'd have to duck. Now, as we go past this last solid cherry pocket door, we'll go to the bedroom area. And then we do return from tile back into carpet into the bedroom area, which I do prefer getting out of bed. This is a queen size Tempur-Pedic bed. So it's a nice memory foam bed. Looks like it's in good shape. There's no bedroom slide back here. There's just the one slide. Of course, all the windows are pleated day night shades as far as window treatments go. The bedroom windows don't seem to have, don't have, seem to have any of the seal creep issue that we had in the front. And while, unfortunately the Original bedroom TV has been removed, but this could be upgraded to a flat screen very easily. Uh, the mirror that goes around there, that fell off on me as I was doing the inspection. I did already let the uh, the current owner know that I did that, and he was okay with it. Uh, but it didn't break, so it just has to be glued back on. It's right there on the couch. In the back, because there is no closet in the bedroom, because remember, this is a very short diesel pusher. Those folding chairs I was telling you about. And there's about all the storage you have in here is going to be the cabinetry on either side. All the closets are in the hallway area. So you do have a little bit more closet space in here. Got to be careful not to rip off another mirror. But there it was, guys. That was kind of fun to share this 2002 Intrigue from Country Coach. This is an exceptionally well-maintained and well-loved RV. Of course, Country Coach made some of the best luxury production units I think the industry has ever seen. This inspection went extremely well. We saw the roof. There was just a few minor inconveniences. Most of it's going to be just a deterioration of some plastic lenses and some plastic uh, refrigerator vent cap. Uh, and, of course, a uh, TV antenna boot. The rest of the interior and chassis inspection went pretty well, too. I made a list for the uh, possible new owner, and I will advise them on what I think. But, uh... I don't know if you guys see my smile. This is a really nice coach. It's really easy to uh, recommend this coach because it's been so well maintained. It was really fun to share that opportunity to share this rarer short diesel pusher with you guys. It's not something you guys get to see very often. I'm going to try to enjoy the rest of the weather up here. Maybe even make it to the Grand Canyon. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I mean, come on. Would I really drive two hours out of the way just to look at the Grand Canyon one more time in my life? Yeah, yeah, I think I would. Whew. It's time to go home. It's pretty dark outside because I'm going to drive about two and a half miles. Like most of these, we're going to get up on the roof, take out a look. But, and I think it'll be fun to head up. But that was really...